Hey everyone, how's it going? Aaron Rift here from NoDQ.com. This is NoDQ's post Payback 2017 review video. I am being joined by Virtue as well as the PA sensation, Greg Cherry. No David Payne tonight. Unfortunately, there was some drama tonight on the NoDQ.com discuss comments section while I was doing live coverage. Hopefully this is not a recurring problem and this was just a one-time thing. David has the night off, but the three of us are here to discuss the show. Greg, I'll start with you. Overall, your thoughts on the show before we break down the results. Yeah, I thought it started okay, um, but then, much like you guys said with WrestleMania, I kind of went in a downward spiral after that. And... I mean, Reigns and Strowman, the ending of that kind of saved it a little bit, but uh, there are no words, really. I mean, the House of Horrors match, we'll get into. Oh, yeah. Too, but. Oh, yeah. We will definitely get into that. Virtue, overall, your thoughts real quick before we break down these results. Well, I it, was, it started encouraging. I popped for the Jericho. You know, we'll talk about that. And some of the finishes I enjoyed throughout the show, but again, just that whole being outside of the arena, the whole house of horrors, it just it went <clears throat> downhill from there, and that's WWE Creative's fault. They lost me. Well, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Let's start off with the kickoff match, which was Enzo and Cass versus Anderson and Gallows. Basic kickoff match, Enzo and Cass picked up the victory. It was... Cass essentially making the save for Enzo, who was about to be hit with the Magic Killer. And then Enzo got a roll-up on Gallows. The club on Twitter have vowed revenge, so apparently this feud will continue. Virtue, any other thoughts you want to add regarding this match? You know, I was on the pre-show. I was kind of wondering why it was earlier in the pre-show. Um, I didn't realize there was going to be a Miz TV. Very, very surprised that Enzo got the pin. Um but I guess, you know, Enzo and Cass have to go over some time. But I would have thought if that was the case, the big Cass would have got the, the pin. He would have did something to, to win them the match. So that was kind of strange to me that Enzo got the, the victory there. Right. Greg? Greg? Uh, there wasn't anything really outstanding in this match. I mean, the finish was decent for what it was. Like you said, basic tag team match, nothing really to write home about. All right. Uh, we had the Miz TV segment with Finn Balor. Balor did mention during this segment that he wants to get his Universal title back. And, of course, Miz said that Brock Lesnar would break Balor in half. Balor said Miz was not worth beating up, but then the Miz kept running his mouth and Balor decided to beat up the Miz. And that was the segment. I'm guessing they're going to feud at this point, but I'm not really sure. Greg, your thoughts on the segment and Balor potentially going for the universal title again, or do you think that it won't happen anytime soon? Um, I, I personally like to see Balor get a title shot. I know my wife would since she's a huge Balor fan. Um, whether it happens at the next pay-per-view, which I believe is Great Balls of Fire, or, or is it Extreme Rules? It's Extreme I don't know Rules. The- Extreme Rules in okay. June, and then in July it's Great Balls of Fire. Goodness gracious. Um, I, I think the people, the same people that booked House of Horrors came up with that name for – Great balls of fire. But anyways. Um, yeah. It, it, I mean, I don't like what even to say about the universal title situations created in August changes hands or it, it's given up after being won the first time. Owens has it. Lewis is a 21 second match. Lesnar wins it. And then you don't see him for three months. It's like, right. okay, universal title. Yeah. Way to go in your first year. Um, I don't know, but I, I am excited to see more of Finn Balor in the ring. I've always enjoyed him, and I think he'll have a good storyline with the Miz. I actually I enjoy Miz TV because the Miz is great on the mic, especially in the last year. I love his hand gestures. Everybody's going to start seeing that now. He goes crazy with his hands when he talks. But Finn Balor, as soon as he presented that image to me about going to the, for the Universal title, and I thought of Brock Lesnar and then Finn Balor, it, it just wasn't connecting to me, but maybe that's because I need to see a buildup. But Finn is so small, it's going to be hard for me to see him go against these guys like Strowman, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar. But, you know, we'll see what happens. But I did like Miz TV, the hot, one of the hottest guys in the company, delegated to the pre-show. 
I didn't understand that. Typical WWE. It just felt like yeah. filler. It was basically a filler segment just to yeah. take up some time before the pay-per-view. Uh, to kick off the pay-per-view, we had Kevin Owens versus The Miz. For, or, oops, I put The Miz on here on my notes. Botch. Uh, Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho for the U.S. title. Jericho had the light-up scarf, which I thought was cool. A uh, good match. I really liked the finish a lot, which was playing off of WrestleMania. You know how Owens got the one finger on the ropes. But this time, Jericho worked over the finger, and Owens was unable to use his fingers to get to the ropes, and as a result, tapped out. And Chris Jericho, who is heading off to work with Fozzie, and apparently taking a hiatus, won the U.S. title. So what what happens now? Does um, Jericho lose the title on SmackDown Live? Um, I would assume that's going to happen, or maybe... Maybe Jericho will pull a Brock Lesnar and just be champion while not being on television. That could happen as well. You never know uh, with WWE. But yeah, definitely a lot of people thrown off by this, that Jericho won. Um, but it does happen with Jericho. Sometimes you think something's too predictable. And with Jericho, you never, you never know for sure. Um, Greg, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on the match and the title change. You put Miz instead of Jericho. You know what happens... Aaron, what happened when you do that? No, I'm not going to do the whole bit. Um, but it was it was a nice surprise. I enjoyed the way that this match was booked. Um, I, I like the fact that Jericho saw the finger and he worked over the hand the rest of the match. It, it, it was very, very old school booking. I quite enjoyed that. And seeing Jericho as U.S. champion again, I'm not going to complain. I mean, I, I'm as big a Jericho fan as anybody. So, you know, hats off to them for a great opening match. David? Fantastic finish. Uh, you know, everybody thought Jericho's leaving. He's going to lose. Kevin Owens is going to win. I actually called it because I said, let him win the U.S. title. SmackDown Live, Owens can win it back. I'm sure that's what they're going to do. But, again, I love the match. Hot opener. Got me excited for the rest of the show. But here's the issue that I have. Mr. Payne, you know what happens when you kick me out of a no DQ <laughs> crew chat? You, Mr. Payne, just made the list. That's the list of the list of virtue, and no, no more mentioning yeah. that. Let's let's try not to escalate this any further. I'm, I'm hoping he knows I'm kidding. He knows I love him, man. Come on. I know we all love David Payne, and hopefully uh, there will not be problems when I do future live coverage. You know, this was hopefully just a one-off deal. But anyways, let, let's move away from that before we we uh, make this too melodramatic. Um, next up, we had Neville versus Austin Aries for the Cruiserweight title. Um, I was a little surprised because at WrestleMania we had a controversial finish and I figured for this one it would be more decisive and Aries would get the title. Um, but instead we had a DQ. Neville was on the verge of losing the match and losing the title when he grabbed the referee causing a DQ. And um, I'm a little surprised by that. So it looks like they're going to drag this out for one more pay-per-view. Virtue, your thoughts on the match? You know, I kind of... I didn't do predictions with you guys, but I would have actually picked Neville. I don't know why. I really like him as a heel. Um, I didn't expect this finish, though. So, again, it's dragging it on. Where are we going to see this match? At a pay-per-view? Are we going to see it on 205 Live, on Raw? But it's like I, I just feel like give the belt to Aries, and even if it's a short run, you know Neville could win it back from him. Who knows? But it, it's just it seems tedious right now. Greg? You know, I, I like the – finish because it was again an old school heel finish using the referee to get the disqualification and keep the championship that they don't do enough of those using the cheap finishes in my opinion um so i liked it um i just kind of hope that they don't throw this away tomorrow night on raw with some sort of like no disqualification match i kind of hope they continue to build it because i don't want to see them throw it away and aries win the title on raw i want to see him win it on on a pay-per-view or live show or network special or whatever they call it now. And maybe some sort of gimmick match there. Maybe a no disqualification, maybe a false yeah. count anywhere. They they can do more than just simple cruiserweight matches, so I hope they get that chance. Right, yeah. and um, now that they've done this, this DQ here, they might as well have it continue until Extreme Rules now and, and do the final blow-off match with some sort of stipulation. Makes sense. It's yep. Extreme Rules, so you have an Extreme Rule to settle the feud once and for all. All right, next up we had the Hardys versus Shazaro, or is it, how, how do you pronounce it? I think they had a different way they Shizaro. pronounced it. Shazaro. Well, I call it Shazaro because 
Actually, when I was doing one of my videos a few weeks ago, I accidentally said Shazaro when I was trying to say Seamus and Cesaro. So I'm just going to call it Shazaro. That's how I naturally pronounced it by mistake. Uh, but anyways, you can call it whatever you want. But um, I enjoyed this match. I thought it was entertaining. The crowd was really into the Broken Hardys. They were doing Brother Nero chants, obsolete chants. Um, Seamus knocked out one of Jeff's teeth at one point. I, I forgot what what move it was exactly, but yeah, there there was a, there was this picture. What what move was it? He kicked him in the face. Yeah, it was <laughs> like a punt, freak. like a punt. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I saw this. All I saw was a screen cap of Jeff with the missing tooth. <laughs> I wonder if they were able to find that, and and uh, maybe he'll have some sort of procedure to put it back in. Who knows? Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, this was a fun match. Hardy Boys won, or should I say the Hardys? Um, not yet the Broken Hardys again, but we'll see what happens because after the match, um, there was a handshake between the two teams. And then as the Hardys were celebrating, you had Shizarro jump the Hardys from behind, officially turning heel. Um, I thought that this was the, the right move. I, I, I felt that, you know, even though Cesaro does get good reactions, it, it feels like his, his momentum as a babyface has cooled off a little bit over the past couple months. Um, I think this was the right move to keep them relevant in the tag team division. So, uh, Virtue, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on the match? I enjoyed the match. Anything with the Hardys coming back and the little tidbits of the broken. But, at the, you know, when the match was over, I didn't expect the Hardys to necessarily win. I thought something would happen and, and put the belts on Shizaro. But I was shocked. Like, I, I didn't think they were going to do the heel turn. And like you said, they left and came back. So the seed, to me, has now been planted. Hopefully, WWE does own the broken gimmick or the Hardys again, and they can bring that into their storyline. But to me, that's the beginning of, of the, setting that up. You know, Matt, Matt was decimated on the edge of the apron, and they kind of zoomed in on his face, and he was just out cold. And it, that, that shows all the signs of the broken gimmick to me. Greg, what's your thoughts on that? You know, I think we talked about this on the predictions that – you know, the possibility of a heel turn, especially after the little bit of teasing after the singles matches. Um, so I like that. I like the fact that Matt was more broken. Personally, I've enjoyed the conflicted gimmick that he's had where he's, I'm V-Wanna, and then later in the match, yes. <laughs> I, I enjoy just listening and watching Matt Hardy the entire time. Like, even when Jeff's in the ring, it's like my focus is on Matt and paying attention to what he's doing because he's – by far more entertaining than I think he's ever been in his career with the broken gimmick. So uh, I'm interested to see uh, how this plays out and what kind of match they'll probably have at Extreme Rules. Yeah, right now the Hardys are just cracked. Maybe in a month or two they will be fully broken again and we'll get to see some fun stuff from them. Speaking of fun stuff, we had Bailey in her hometown defending the Raw Women's title against Alexa Bliss. Crowd, as you would expect, was very much into Bailey. Um, but not, I guess not so much of a surprise. We had a title change. Alexa won the title from Bailey here in Bailey's hometown of San Jose. Uh, I thought this was a good match. And even though I'm, I'm not a big fan of the hometown hero losing, and it seems to happen a lot in WWE, I guess the logic is that the heel gets heat by beating the hometown hero. But it happens so much. Um, WCW did it too. You know, every time Ric Flair was in Charlotte, it seemed like Ric Flair always got his ass kicked by the NWO or something. But, um, you know, I, I, I think that this was the right move because of the fact that, that I feel Bailey needs to be the underdog. She should be chasing the title rather than being the champion. She's an underdog-type character. That's my take on it. Uh, what do you think, Greg? You know, I, I'm a fan of the title change. I thought Bailey's character, and we mentioned this on the prediction show as well, that her character is getting kind of stale. Yeah. And she, is really no fault of her. It's the way she's been booked since she's come to the main roster. Because in NXT, that gimmick, perfectly fine. Right. Um, but I'm a fan of the title change. I'm a fan of Alexa Bliss to begin with. So seeing her with the championship, and it's my own fault for going against the WWE logic, hmm. uh, saying that hometown hero is never going to lose. I say, no, she'll win this one. It's, I should have known better. Virtue, what do you think? So Alexa Bliss is now the official first women to have the SmackDown and the Raw titles since right. they've been two separate titles. So that's cool. She's a great choice. You know, Bailey, she didn't win the belt the right way for being an underdog hero. So I like the fact that you put it on Bliss, let her become that heel, 
let Bailey chase it. You know, I'm not sure if Bailey's going to get in a program with Sasha Banks or if they're going to do a triple threat. But I think it was the right move, kind of reboot Bailey as the underdog, like Aaron said, and let her do it the right way next time with no Sasha Banks helping her. So Alexa Bliss, great choice tonight. I agree on that. You know, we talked about this before how, you know, they, they messed the whole thing up by having, first of all, Bailey winning at Fastlane, ending Charlotte's streak at Fastlane, and having Sasha help her to win. You know, Bailey should have done it at WrestleMania on her own without help if they were going to tell that story properly. But, you know, it is what it is, and I'm sure Bailey will be okay in the long run as long as they don't continue to further screw up her character, at least. Um, all right, you guys ready? You ready for the discussion about. Yes. The WWE version of White Castle of Fear, the House of Horrors. Okay, so, so many things I have to say about this. Um, you know, San Jose is the West Coast, of course. And on the West Coast, at this time of year, it doesn't get dark until 8 o'clock at night. This thing was supposed to be happening live, and it was pitch black. So, either WWE just totally did not even think about that or maybe the the logic is that bray wyatt has some magical powers where he can make it dark around his uh his haunted house um greg let's start with you what were your thoughts on part one of this house of horrors what did you like what did you not like well i'm gonna go over the list of things i liked nothing all right now the list of things i didn't like um <laughs> this was just a cluster this this entire thing you know i i'm not sure if they were trying to copy the hardys or if they were like trying to do some kind of horror stuff you have to remember this is also supposed to be a pg show like seeing like all this like satanic stuff in a pg show doesn't exactly fly and it was almost to the point not necessarily of being uncomfortable but it's like the hell am i watching and, and there was very few there was very little actual action in the first part like seeing bray put the fridge on orton like that part was like the only decent part otherwise it was just like a long, long drug out fight with very little action it, I, uh, so um you were not a fan of the shaky camera work i'm presuming no i wasn't and you know again on the prediction show i i felt this match was going to be a disaster and i was absolutely right virtue what do you think <laughs> So WWE has, you know, a film studio, and this should have been a straight-to-DVD movie, straight-to-Netflix, or, or, or wherever, Redbox. But yet they presented it as a match on a pay-per-view. Now, when it got into the arena, with the daylight issues, the nighttime issues aside, when they got to the arena, you know, if that was the whole match, they, you know, Orton and Wyatt could have worked the crowd, especially with the ending with Jinder coming in and the Bollywood boys. That got a good heel pop. So they could have made something out of this if they would have scrapped the whole entire House of Horrors. Look, they have Matt Hardy on hand. You think they consulted him for this? Clearly not, because it would have been a lot better. <laughs> so it, it, it was disastrous. I did enjoy it a little bit when it got to the arena, even though, you know, with that logic that, that didn't make sense aside, um, I was actually happy to see Jinder Mahal. So that does that sum it up? Does is that, that really sum it up? Is that because it was so bad that Jinder Mahal actually That's saved That's what everything? I'm saying. That's um, what I'm saying. And nothing against Orton and Bray. These guys are great workers, but ever since Orton burned down the Wyatt compound, the stories got so convoluted, these guys can't do their thing properly. WrestleMania, the maggots, all the – let them work a match. Let them work the crowd like they know how to do. So, yeah. But they haven't. They have not let them do that. Yeah, the thing that bothered me about this was this was supposed to be the conclusion of this storyline that's been, what, seven, eight months now? I would have liked to have seen something a little bit more decisive and, you know, definitive. Let these guys have, like, a, th this uh, drag drag out, you know, knock knock each other out, you know, back and forth, you know, battle to the end with a, with a clear-cut winner. But we did not get that here. Um, Greg? I, I want to say that... What makes this even more ridiculous is that the WWE champion wasn't involved in this. And my big complaint was that it wasn't for the title. Part of me is glad now that it wasn't because it's like, okay, I was thinking of the halftime heat match. The difference between this and the halftime heat is that they beat the crap out of each other the entire time. The Rock and Mankind did. It's on the network. Go find it. But this match is like, uh, beat each other. 
oh, now where'd the other guy go for like two minutes? Oh, look at all this creepy stuff. And then beat each other down for 30 seconds and then nothing. It's like, oh, oh my gosh. I, I'm just so annoyed by this entire match. Yeah. Greg, don't worry. It, it's over now, right? I mean, literally, it's I, over. I it's Orton hopes. and Jinder and Bray will probably get a new program on Raw, so it should be well, behind us. You know, he might have nightmares tonight. We all might have nightmares tonight about that match. Um, the crowd was chanting boring during the segment, by the way. I, I posted a video of it. It was pretty loud, too. The crowd the crowd booed the, the on-screen graphic before the show even started. So, you know, going in, the crowd was not looking forward to this. And, um, yeah, I, I, I guess the gender thing was fine. But, again, I would have liked to have seen a decisive outcome to this feud that, that we have invested seven to eight months of our time watching, you know. I, 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 hey, Aaron. Yeah. Aaron, someone mentioned this on the No DQ chat. They said with gender interfering, at least it it he took away Orton's revenge, or he took away something. So now Orton's going to be even more angry at gender. So that I kind of understood that on the yeah. chat. So well, it was maybe, maybe that'll yeah. It was effective in getting and getting that storyline going and and generating interest in that. I'm just disappointed because of you know how good the Orton and Bray Wyatt feud was going for a while and how it just uh, you know ended with a whimper instead of a bang. All right, uh, next up we had Samoa Joe versus Seth Rollins. Now, I feel like the crowd heat was uh, not, not quite as strong for this match as the others, and maybe that had something to do with the House of Horrors match, just um, getting people frustrated. I'm not sure. Uh, Joe worked over Rollins' bad knee for most of the match, and uh, pretty much it was Samoa Joe dominating, and then all of a sudden Rollins... Uh, uh, got him in a pinfall and and got the win pretty much out of nowhere and then you know it was, it was essentially a, a non-decisive finish. I'm sure this feud will continue and you know Joe will claim it's a fluke or whatever. Um, Greg, your thoughts on the match? You know, I'm really hoping that all Rowan's matches from here on out aren't going to be psychology on the me. It's like okay, I get it. it it's a weakened body part, but it's like if if this is going to be every <laughs> single match, I'm, it's Gonna annoy me almost as much as the House of Horrors. It's like DDP with but, uh, the taped ribs in WCW. He had the taped ribs exactly. for like a year. Exactly. It's gonna be like D'Lo with the bulletproof vest again. Um, I mean, this match was good. I, I enjoy watching Joe. I enjoy watching Rollins work. Uh, but again, the crowd was kind of dead because they had to deal with all the House of Horrors crap beforehand. Uh, so, and. and I predicted Joe on this one, and again, I was wrong. I think the only match I got right all night was the Hardys. <laughs> I'll have to go back and watch the show again, but I, I don't know. It felt weird to get see Rollins get like a sneaky pin attempt on Joe, and I don't know what that does for his momentum, but I mean, it doesn't really solve anything between the two, and they'll probably have another match at Extreme Rules. Virtue? Yeah, I, I think Joe should have went over in this match. Um, maybe because, you know, Rollins knee. I'm, I'm sick of Michael Cole. Greg mentioned this. He's going to be mentioning the knee all the time now in Rollins matches. But I think Samoa Joe should have went over. There wasn't an energy. Like, I didn't see an energy out of Rollins and Joe in this match. Maybe because the style of match they were working. But and I'm just sitting there watching it, and all of a sudden, the roll-up happened, and I'm like, it's over? And my buddy that was here watching it with me, we, we, were just, we couldn't believe that we just saw those back-to-back -back matches. And at that point, we knew the pay-per-view seemed like going a down, downward spiral. Right, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think it was okay what they did. I, it drags out the feud longer, but I don't know. I think, I think Joe should have won this one, and then maybe Rollins takes a week or two off and then just drop the whole knee thing and you know let him be normal again. But whatever. It is what it is. Uh, we'll just have to deal with it, as we always do. Uh, we had the main event. We already talked about the, the second part of the House of Horrors. Um, so we'll, we'll just go ahead right to the main event now, which was Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. Um, definitely thumbs up for moving past the House of Horrors. Um, Reigns was bandaged up, uh, selling the attack from Strowman uh, with the ambulance on Raw a couple weeks ago. Um, Strowman dominated much of the match. Um, Reigns hit a spear, Strowman kicked out, Strowman hit the running power slam, and, and Reigns kicked out of that. Um, but then Strowman got the clean win with a second running power slam, and this was actually a relatively short match for a pay-per-view main event. It felt like the, the post-match was almost longer than the match itself. Um, after the match, you had Strowman uh, using the steel steps on Roman Reigns, and uh, the crowd chanted, thank you, Strowman, of course. 
And then after the pay-per-view ended, Roman Reigns was uh, backstage. They were trying to load him up in the ambulance. Reigns was spitting up blood. And then he got jumped by Strowman again. Um, I think Reigns like somehow managed to um, dodge hit, dodge the attack. It, it was really dumb. Uh, whatever they did, you know, Strowman was knocked into the trash cans or something, and Reigns was just sitting there with his mouth covered covered in blood. Um, I, I did like the finish, though. I, I, I did like Strowman beating Reigns. The only question I have now is what happens for the June pay per view. If it's going to be Strowman versus um, Strowman versus Lesnar for the title at Great Balls of Fire. Um, what are they going to do in June? Is, is Strowman going to beat Reigns again? Or is Reigns going to win and they're going to do Reigns and Lesnar at, at Great Balls of Fire? Are they going to do a triple threat? Um, uh, Virtue, we'll get your thoughts first and then Greg. I actually enjoyed the match, you know, for two big guys. Um, like I've claimed over and over again online, Roman Reigns knows how to bump. So he made Braun Strowman look extra stronger. Now, with that said... It's not a surprise they had Braun go over. I mean, Reigns has been through the ambulance, all that stuff he went through a few weeks ago on Raw. Um, like you alluded to, their plans are probably going to be Strowman versus Lesnar. But the, the one thing that I, it, I just couldn't grasp is WWE continues to push Reigns as a babyface and Strowman as the heel, but the reactions are as plain as day on television that it's the opposite way. So I wonder what... Vince McMahon and the boy, the guys in the back think about this. So tomorrow night on Raw, is Strowman going to come out to start the show and say, this is my yard now? That would actually be pretty cool. I would like to see that. Your thoughts, Greg? I think that I predicted Reigns to go over just because I was, was like WWE booking. It doesn't matter how bad Reigns gets beat up. He's going to win. I'm so glad I was wrong with that because Strowman beating Reigns, especially – in his beat-up state was the perfect move. If Reigns would have beat Strowman as injured as he was, Strowman would have immediately lost all credibility, no matter how much he did, no matter how big they built him up. Um, so I'm glad Strowman got the win here, and they'll probably lead to some gimmick match, extreme rules. My guess is an ambulance match, just based on the previous weeks of storyline. Um, so that'll probably happen, and maybe Strowman will go over there too to end their feud. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm just curious if Reigns is really going to lose two pay per views in a row. But you know, I figured if they did an ambulance match, that would be an easy way for Reigns to lose without having to be pinned or made to submit. Which we know that's never going to happen. He's never going to submit again. Um, no. If he's John Cena 2.0, especially. Um, so, anyways, that that'll do it for our thoughts on the Payback pay per view. Looking at the NoDQ.com poll so far, uh, the show is getting a thumbs up reaction overall. Um, but it is somewhat mixed, 40% thumbs up, 27% thumbs middle, 23% thumbs down. So pre pretty good feedback for the show. And I would say overall it was a good show. I, w I would give it, uh, you know, maybe a, a B minus. Um, let's get the plugs out of the way and also uh, a letter grade for the show. Uh, Virtue, we'll start with you. I'm going to give the, and this might change when I write my actual review up Monday or Tuesday, but right now I'm going to say a flat B. Um, and my plugs are follow me on Twitter at EGW underscore FOW underscore virtue. And I love your banter. So bring it on, Greg. And I'm going to give the show a B minus. Uh, the House of Horrors really brought it down for me. Um, but I think the rest of the show was pretty decent. Uh, my plugs follow me on Twitter at PA Sensation. Uh, submit questions for the next episode. So the sensational experience i'll be taping that later in the week um already got a couple but i'd love to have some more so send those in and you guys can leave comments not only on the youtube channel but also on the video page at nodq.com at the bottom there is the discuss comments section hopefully we will have no more drama like we did tonight but you guys can leave your comments leave questions for any of us if you have a question about the video Anything you would like us to address, you can leave a comment either on YouTube or on NoDQ.com. We appreciate the feedback and the support. Thank you guys very much for watching this video, and we will see you next time.